Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're trying to find the minimum force required to keep the block from sliding down the wall here. The friction between the block and the wall is 0.3. We're assuming it's static friction because the block should not be moving. So what's keeping the block from coming down? Well, this force applied here has two components. It has a vertical component and it has a horizontal component. Now the horizontal component will push the block into the wall, therefore creating friction, and assuming that without friction the block would slide downward, then we know that there's going to be a friction force in the upward direction, and that friction force has to be equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. In this case, it's a static coefficient of friction. So how do we find that minimum force required? Well, what we need to do first is determine the normal force. We're going to have a normal force pushing back, and this normal force pushing back will have to be equal to this vertical or the horizontal component. Since this angle right here is 60 degrees, that means that this is the same as the component up there. We could actually move that component up here. And notice that that will be the adjacent component to the 60 degree angle. So we could say that F in the X direction is going to be equal to F times the cosine of 60 degrees. The vertical component, F sub y, is going to be equal to, notice that that angle, this side will be opposite to this angle, so it will be F times the sine of 60 degrees. Now we don't know yet what F is equal to, but what we can say here is that the normal force is therefore going to be equal to the horizontal component, so let's start with that. The normal force will be equal to F sub X, will be equal to F times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half. Therefore, that's equal to 0 0.5 times the minimum force required to keep it from sliding. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sum up all the vertical forces. The sum of all the forces in the Y direction should add up to 0. Now we have the weight acting in the negative direction, so that's minus the weight, and we have the vertical component of F sub y, that would be plus F times the sine of 60 degrees, and then we have the friction force right here, so it would be plus the friction force, and all those together should add up to zero. So let's write out what these are equal to, so zero is equal to minus 100 newtons, plus the force times the sine of 60 degrees, which is 0 0.866, plus the friction force, which is the normal force times mu sub s, and the normal force is 0.5f, so that would be 0.5f times the coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.3. Working this out and bringing this to the other side, well, let's see here. Let me leave it like this. So we have 0 is equal to minus 100 newtons plus 0.866F, and then plus 0.5 times 0.3, which is 0.15F. Now we can combine those two, simplify the equation, 0 equals minus 100 newtons, and add this together, that would be plus 1.016F, and therefore F is going to be equal to 100 newtons, when I bring this across, it becomes minus f, multiply both sides by negative 1 to get rid of the negatives, and divide that by the coefficient of f, which is 1.016. And, see here, 100 divided by 1.016 equals 98.4 newtons. And, that is the minimum force required in order to keep the block from sliding. And so that's how we do this problem. We first find the normal force in terms of the force applied. So we sum up all the force in the x direction, then we sum up all the force in the y direction, and simultaneously solve the two equations for f, and that's how we did it. 